Hello, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today I bring to you a project I've been putting together over the past few months. This is me putting a Raspberry Pi computer in an original Commodore 64 case. Sometimes this is referred to as the BMC64 project, Bare Metal Computer 64. Basically, you get a super slim version of the Commodore 64 Vice emulator running on the Pi. Then you plug it into a box. It's pretty fast, and it lets you run multiple Commodore computer systems if you want, like the PET, the VIC-20, and the Commodore 64, even the 128, I believe. This started out with me buying this Commodore shell on eBay. This one came from Hungary. There are actually models out there with slightly different colors, like this one. This wasn't sold in the United States. The keys are lighter, and, you know, the case is the same, it just looks different. I actually seem to be collecting Commodore 64s these days. It's kind of weird, but I was also excited to find it, so pretty happy. When I was a kid, I had no idea there were so many variants out there. So to get this put together, besides a case, you need to get a few things. First, you need to get a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi 3 is the most recent model this project should be able to utilize for now, or at least that's what I've been reading. It also happens that this is the one board that I actually have free, and I'm not going to be able to run out and go buy another one for a while anyway. They're actually remarkably expensive these days for no reason. Anyway, this is the one board I have, so it worked out great. You're also going to need a board that converts the Commodore 64 keyboard to the Raspberry Pi, and have something that offers joystick ports as well. If you wanted to do this project yourself, you could also buy something called a Kira, but to be honest, I don't think they're being manufactured anymore, and they certainly aren't in stock. So you can buy a BMC64 board or the parts. I found this particular board on eBay for about $30, and that was totally worth it for me. I could definitely solder this stuff together myself, but I have to buy all the different parts and have so many leftovers just to get one board together. That's too much of a hassle, so 30 bucks is a good investment. I had to get some other parts too. A small USB cord that is just for the inside of the shell. It's going to connect this board to the Raspberry Pi. That's where you get power. Also needed a ribbon cable to connect the interface to the GPIO connector. And then a couple of extenders. I have one HDMI and one USB port extender that will be routed to the back of the machine. It'll let me plug in an, an HDMI cable and a USB cable when I have the case closed. You're going to need to plug in a USB keyboard to set things up initially once you get this all plugged in, because you'll have to tell the computer how to utilize the keyboard. You also need some printed parts. You'll see them here. They basically give you a place for mounting some of these ports to the outside of the machine, and it covers up the openings. On the inside, it also gives the Pi a place to mount. There are a bunch of different 3D part files out there you can find on the internet that people have already created. I found a few, and with some slight modifications, I managed to get them to fit perfectly in my case. It did take some adjustments, so I had to learn how to use some software. You can also buy these parts pre-printed if you really want, if you don't have a 3D printer. I did see some on eBay, but I gotta be honest, I had problems making the pieces fit when I first printed them. So I don't know why I'd want to buy them from somebody else and just hope for the best. So before I assembled the machine, I also went to the BMC64 project pages and went looking for the system files needed to get this working. Before you put something like this together, it's a good idea to make sure you can get it working first. At least mostly working before you have to do the last configurations. For the most part, this was as simple as dragging and dropping a file directory to an SD card. And then I had to get some Commodore-specific ROMs to get this moving. Pretty close to the same thing I had to do for my Commodore project that I did a month or so back when I put an Elite 64 motherboard in a VIC-20. I'll link to that in the description. So... I had a Pi that was tested and mostly ready to go. Then it was just a matter of mounting things in place and routing wires. Everything fits, but you'll have to figure out the best way you want to route the cables. I also needed to add a mount to the case on the inside, which was something I 3D printed, and I just attached it to the case with a bit of hot glue. I could have used super glue, but hot glue is easier to remove down the road if you need to. I also bought myself a power supply for the unit. Basically, there's a plug in the side of this board that uses a particular type of interface. Using the specs provided, you can pick one up for about 10 bucks. They also say that it's relatively common as far as power supplies go, but I didn't have a spare, so I had to get a new one. Then with everything plugged in and screwed in place, you close the case. Then you turn it on, and about 3 or 4 seconds later, it's going to boot up straight into Commodore. If you press the Commodore key and F7, it'll bring up the Vice menu. This is where you're going to have to go to set the GPIO configuration to the number 2, and the joystick ports to Bank 2. Then go to the bottom and click Save Settings. You can press the escape arrow to back out of the menus. You press Enter to move forward. Pretty easy. 
Then you go to the auto start program disk at the top if you want to navigate to a file you want to load, like a ROM file. This is also one of those projects where you might have to configure this, the, at least the joystick ports differently from time to time, just to get them working, because most Commodore games are generally use port 2, but some do use port 1, so you might have to adjust. I think the most important thing about this project is remembering to press F7 to get back to the main menu. So it works, and I'm super excited it's working this easily. This is, I couldn't have expected a better outcome. I'm also happy that I could figure out how to manipulate those particular 3D files online. Found a website called Tinkercad that was actually pretty useful and free. I'm hoping to do this same project in a couple of months with a Commodore 16 case, but I'm going to give this other project a few months before I actually get that one rolling. Mostly because Raspberry Pis are crazy expensive right now, and you can't go and buy one at the price it's supposed to be sold at. So. Until those start getting back in stock normally, I'm not going down that route. Well, that's all I have today for my BMC64 Raspberry Pi in a Commodore 64 case project. Hope you found it interesting. And if you're into this sort of thing, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And hope to catch you on another video.